In this video, I'll show how to control one of these Adafruit LED matrices with a tinker board. Let's get started. To connect the device, I'll use this breadboard and plug the pins of the LED matrix straight into it. I'll be using these jumpers to connect into those pins, with green being the SCL pin, blue being the SDA pin, black being for ground, and red being for positive. Next I'll go over here to the tinker board and connect ground to one of the ground pins and positive to one of the 5 volt pins. From the bottom here it starts on the second pin with SDA followed by the SCL. So you can see they're all grouped nicely together there. Now, for the software side of things, you'll first need to enable I2C on the board. I'm going to skip over that part because it's pretty simple, and there are already some good tutorials out there for doing that. You'll also need the Python module SMBus, which is pretty easy to find. Adafruit has their own Python library for controlling these matrices, that will probably work just fine on the Tinkerboard, but the protocol is so simple, I'll just be implementing it here in this script. So first I'm just importing time and SMBus time so we can do a delay between updates, and SMBus obviously to communicate with the I2C device. We're creating a class named LED Matrix. It takes in an I2C parameter, which defaults to 1. This is going to be the I2C device on your board, which for the most part is probably going to be 1. You shouldn't have to change this ever. And then the address here is going to be the address of the particular matrix you're trying to communicate with. For these Adafruit LED matrices, the default is always the hex value 7, 0. But there are some points that you can jump with some solder to change the address, so I'm leaving it as a parameter here. Next, you just establish the bus to the I2C device. Um, by writing the hex value 21 or 21, it'll turn the board on. And then you can enable the LED matrix by sending the hex value 81. You can also enable blinking here, but I'm going to skip over that part because we don't need it. Next, I'm just setting the brightness of the matrix, and that's going to be done with this E0 value. And then you can just add or increment the brightness that you want. 15 is the max, by the way. This state array is just going to hold the state of the matrix. And basically every one of these values is going to be a row, and then the first eight bits of this integer is going to be an LED in that row. So then this set item method takes in a location, which is a pair of row and column values, and a state that you want to set that row column LED to. And that's done just by finding out what bit it is which is just by bit shifting with the row, and then checking to see if the state that you're setting to is equal to the state that it already is. If it's not equal, then you just flip that bit using an XOR operator. This method just similar to this, but instead you're going to return the value of the current state instead of changing anything. And then the draw method will iterate over the columns. Oops, I'm sorry. I said that these were rows earlier. They're actually columns in the way I have it configured here. It doesn't really matter. It's just the orientation that you have your matrix. But the code here is definitely set up to be each one of these values as a column. So anyway, the draw method just iterates over the columns and then sends the columns or calls the send column method for that column. And then here is how that method is implemented. There's kind of a quirk on these boards where the bits are rotated. So the last bit should actually be the first bit, which I guess you can say is a bit odd. Then I'm just using an AND mask here to make sure that we're only getting one byte because we rolled the bits earlier. Next we're going to compute the register that we want. And I'm doing this just by taking the column times 2 because these matrices are actually set up to work with by color, so like two LEDs per pixel, and we actually need to skip that pixel that we're not using in this single color matrix. 
And then this next line just writes the bits that we want to the location that we want for the address of our I square C device. And then down here is where the actual demo begins now that we have our matrix class. So first we're just constructing one of the matrices and we're gonna run this forever. And all I'm doing is looping over the rows and then the columns, although those are technically backwards here, and then toggling the current one drawing the matrix and then waiting a bit so that you can actually see what's happening. And that's it. And then if I execute that Python script, it all works. You see a little bit of flash in this video and it's just because the LEDs are actually multiplexed. To the human eye, it doesn't look like that at all. It looks like a solid image.